accounts. Self-explanatory, these are the accounts that run your SQL Server services. Um, the database engine, of course, is a service. SQL Server agent is a service. Um, you're, you know, for sure going to have those two. You'll have the SQL browser always, um, which typically is disabled. Um, and then, you know, if you have integration services, analysis services, reporting services, full text, those are all things that, that have accounts associated with them. Um, the types of accounts that you can run your services with local computer accounts. If you're not at a domain, um, you're, you know, it's your developer edition SQL server on your laptop or something, you know, you can run it just as a, a, a local account on the local computer, obviously not recommended for a, a production server. Um, the next level is domain or active directory accounts, um, which is preferred simply because we, we're taking the password, the database that contains the security information off of the SQL server, right? So if the SQL server is compromised, that doesn't necessarily mean they can get the password to the service account and so forth. Virtual accounts, when you install SQL server by default, it will run the services under a virtual account. And we're going to talk about that because it, it has some interesting implications in terms of it doesn't look like a real account because it's not, it's a virtual account. So what, what's the security context of that virtual account? So we'll talk about that and actually look at what the service principal name looks like for that. And then finally manage service accounts, um, which again are, are the preferred way to run your services. Uh, not just for SQL Server and anything that's a service that supports MSAs or group MSAs, I, I would highly recommend, um, you know, taking the effort to implement that. Okay, virtual accounts. These are the default. Um, if you do not change the accounts, um, add install. Um, and this is actually kind of nice. They started this, I, I don't even want to say what version, it's been a few versions of SQL Server. Um, but they used the default to like local system or network service or some kind of the built-in local computer accounts that are the pretty insecure way to run things. Um, so the way virtual accounts work is they delegate, they delegate to the computer account. So one of the things that you may not be familiar with as a, a DBA is, is things in Active Directory. In addition to your authentication for users, right? So your user account that you log in with uh, a lot of environments, you know, you have an admin account and a regular account. Uh, there may be domain admin accounts. Um, you have service accounts, of course, every computer, um, whether it's a server workstation, laptop, domain controller, um, that is a member of active directory gets a computer object in active directory. And the way virtual accounts work, they look like this. Right. So it'll be something like NT service MS SQL server, or if it's a named instance, it'll have, you know, MS SQL dollar sign instance name. Right. And we're, you're probably familiar with that from just looking at services, right? What this does is it actually, it's a virtual account that uses that computer account. Those are the permissions that this service account will have are those of the computer account. And that has some interesting um, ramifications that we'll talk about. Okay. Manage service accounts. Um, we'll talk about briefly here and then a little bit later on when we get into the demo of actually doing this, we will implement managed service accounts. MSAs were introduced in windows server 2008 R2. Um, and essentially what they provide that the number one reason why we like to use these is automatic password management, right? We know service accounts, we, you know, best practices to secure a service account. We want it to uh, be follow the principle of least privilege, right? So we don't want it to have interactive login. We don't want it associated with an end user, right? We want it to have a strong password. And one of the things that we should do is rotate that password periodically. And it, you know, if, if you've been around services and service accounts for very long, it's a rare environment that that's actually happening. You know, most of the, most places that service account password is known to lots of people might be using the same service account on all the servers and, and it just doesn't get rotated. So what managed service accounts do is 
essentially you're you're almost outsourcing the password management to Active Directory. And we'll talk about how that works. But essentially that password um, will be 120 characters and it's never known to a human. You can't go, you can't go retrieve the password of that service account and use it. Um, and so it's highly secure. And most importantly, it, it takes that whole, um, rotating passwords, strongly passwords, all of that out of our hands. Um, it also simplifies service principal name management, uh, which we'll talk about. Um, and, and managed service account or what they sometimes refer to as an SMSA is associated with a single server. So we talked about that computer object that re represents the SQL server, that managed service account will be, can be used can be given permissions to be used by a single computer object. A great managed service account is nothing more than a service account that you can assign to a group or to multiple computers. And so this is the preferred mechanism for SQL Server uh, in, you know, recent years, um, extends the functionality to multiple servers and hosts. Some service account best practices. Separate accounts for each service. Separate accounts per instance or availability group. In an availability group, the all the replicas need to have the same service account. But normally, uh, we would recommend a separate account per instance. Now, one of the things that comes up with that is permissions, right? That you know we have this this service account that we run all of our SQL servers under, and that way we can give it permissions to like the backup share or or to different resources that we know all SQL servers are going to need. And the way to manage that, the preferred way to manage that would be through a group, right? So separate service account for each instance, put them all in a global security group, assign that global security group the permissions. Always use a domain account. Uh, even if you're not using a managed service account, at least it should be a domain account in Active Directory. Um, it should not have an interactive login. Um, it should not be associated with a user. Uh, one of the things I think from a security standpoint, if you're not a security person to think about when you think about things like admin accounts, service accounts, things like that, is this. Any account that is associated with an email address is inherently insecure, right? So if you're in an environment where, you know, you have your normal login that's associated with your email, associated with all your, your normal access to, to the user level things. Uh, and then you have an admin account, which is a separate account in active directory that you use for access to production servers. That's why, right? And if you're not doing that, you, you probably should. Strong password with regular changes. Okay. Couple of key points here. Your service account for SQL server does not need to be, and should not be a local admin. Right. We're, we're all familiar with the principle of least privilege. Unfortunately, what happens in many environments is the principle of most privilege gets followed because it's easy. If I make my service accounts, local admins, I don't have to worry about permissions. I don't have to worry about this. I don't have to worry about that. So your service account does not and should not be a local admin. Number one, if you take nothing else away about service accounts from this webinar, take this. When you change your service account, um, whether it is just rotating the password or actually using a different account, it is critically important to use SQL Server Configuration Manager or a tool that uses SQL management objects. So there's like DBA tools, PowerShell commands you can use for this and so forth. Um, because the SQL Server Configuration Manager um, manages the permissions that the service account needs. So if you change your service account, it's not a local admin, and you use like the services control panel to do that, it's not going to have the permissions that it needs um, to run SQL Server. Uh, when you change it with SQL Server Configuration Manager, it takes care of that for you. The more that and that's that's important. Most important though is there is this there is a key called the service master key that exists on every SQL Server. It doesn't exist, and if needed, it will automatically be created. 
And that is the root of the encryption hierarchy for SQL Server. So if you have database master keys, those are dependent upon or subordinate to the service master key. Um, if you're using things like, you know, transparent data encryption, always encrypt it. All of those keys are going to be based upon that service master key. The service master key uses the password of the service account as its seed to generate that key. So when you change the password of the service account, you need to recreate the service master key. SQL Server Configuration Manager does that for you. So always use SCCM or SQL Server Configuration Manager to change the service account.